So many of us have heard the word hormone optimization bandied about. What does it mean? We're here with probably the founder of hormone optimization, or at least one that's really brought out the, uh, the, the term hormone optimization. He's going to speak to, uh, with us about hormone optimization after this, so keep watching. Hi, welcome to Balance My Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, liking, and leaving comments so we can find out what you're interested in. So today I'm here with my friend Jay Campbell. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, probably one of the first uh, people I know to start using the term hormone optimization. And in the UK, we spell optimization with an S instead of a Z, but that's okay. And um, we're going to talk today about kind of step by step, what is hormone optimization? So um, Jay is an author, um, you know, kind of a marketer, and kind of really brilliant with grasping the concepts of, of TRT, HRT, hormone optimization, and kind of bringing it down to a level that people can understand. So Jay, hey, welcome, and thanks for coming on, on our podcast. Michael, it's good to see you, brother. Always is a, it's, I'm always a humbled, honored, and privileged to, to talk with you or speak with you or work with you, so it's an honor for me. Um, it's cool, you know, we were talking off air before I came on the show. The last time we were together was in 2019 at the AMMG, <clears throat> excuse me, medical uh, conference in Miami. And how much the world has changed, right, since then. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you could never have imagined it at that time that everything would shift so much in the world. But, uh, you know, for guys like us and people in the space that we're in, it was it's actually been a good shift because it's forced people, as you said, to look within, you know, to go internal, to realize that the, you know, state or federal or country or city, you know, managed wherever they are in the world, uh, managed healthcare program is toast, right? Like that stuff is not going to give you if you're interested in like, you know, optimal health and living longer and stronger, it's not going to, that is not going to give you what you need. So the people that are receptive to that idea, uh, you know, are, um, you know, super motivated and, you know, aspirational now in like seeking out people like you and seeking out like people like me, you know, to find out how can I go deeper? You know, I want to look and feel my best as I'm aging into my 50s, 60s and 70s. So you're right. I mean, this has been a great uh, you know, rebirth, so to speak, of people who are now looking to take their health into their own hands. So, yeah, absolutely. And again, it's really, we're really honored to have, have you have you here. W tell us from the beginning, because um, I'm not sure, I mean, no, you've written in, in the books. Um, when did you begin discovering that you may have had an, an issue with uh, hormone imbalance? Well, I mean, it was, I was 29. Uh, for people who know me, I've you know, told this story a million times, so I'll give a very high-level version. But I got kicked in the testicles playing basketball. Play, you know, I was an ex-professional basketball player, college player. Uh, but this is eight years later. You know, I'm almost 30, and I'm playing an adult men's league. Got kicked. Uh, you know, uh, came over and uh, you know, just went back about my life. And about eight to nine weeks later, I started feeling absolutely run down. My low back was killing me. I couldn't play anymore. Uh, so I went to a PPO doctor. Uh, which, you know, in the United States is a, you know, a primary care physician. And uh, luckily, and as I always say, there's no coincidence in the universe, only synchronicities. Uh, he recommended me to an endocrinologist. And the endocrinologist happened to be a very high level, Harvard educated uh, guy by the name of Dr. Raymond Scruggs. And he, you know, uh, did a test panel. And my testosterone was like, at the time, I still have it over my files, but it was like 270 or 282 or some shit like that. And, and remember, this is back in 1999 when the ranges were higher than they are now. So um, he said, look, I can put you on a, uh, a regimen of therapeutic testosterone, have you write his reign in eight to 10 weeks, go home, talk to your wife, who I was actually not married at the time, but I was engaged. I was not even two months away from getting married uh, and, you know, ask her and she was okay with it. So I did. And, you know, she's like, well, you're a smart guy. You know, I had a minor in college in molecular biology. So I was always kind of like a nerdy, you know, into the science, reading studies type thing. So I did it. And uh, you know, fast forward, eight, as you know, eight, 10 weeks, and I felt unbelievable. I mean, I've never felt better in my life. Uh, I just felt out. I mean, it was just unbelievable. So he wanted to take me off. And I was like, no way. I'm not coming off of this. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I felt optimized and didn't know what optimized was. But I mean, I just felt amazing. And so then, you know, the next 10 years of my life, really longer than that, next 10 to 12 years of my life, I just got into biohacking it. And really understanding, you know, how to use it, you know, a similar story to you and how you used it and I found out about it. But, um, you know, my friends then that were in my inner circle would always be like, dude, you got to write a book about this. 
And I was always like, ah, you know, I'm in the real estate space and internet marketing space. Why would I want to do that? I'm a non-medically trained, you know, person. Um, but I ended up doing, writing a book, you know, I reached out to Nelson Bergel and he read my white paper and he was like, dude, this is phenomenal. You know, and he helped me, uh, you know, kind of coached me and stuff. And then in 2015, the first book came out and it was obviously a massive success. And then from that book, uh, you know, I met all these different people in the space, including yourself. Uh, and it just went on and worded upward from there. And I wrote, you know, five more books after that. You know, I really started getting into writing books about more, more than hormonal optimization, health optimization, right? So talking about fasting and autophagy and hormesis and li living longer, stronger, life extension, all those things. But obviously, I wrote the TOT Bible in 2018. It was actually written in 2017, published in February of 2018. And now think about that, dude. It's four years ago, right? So it's old now, right? But it's still obviously a masterpiece resource in that it's over 630 pages. It's got over a thousand scientific studies. It's you know, very well referenced. And as you said, you know, written for the lay person for the most part to understand. I mean, most doctors that prescribe hormones have read it, right? I mean, it's just kind of the thing. You've shared that with all doctors. In fact, I, I know you um, helped you write the, the bit about the Proviron. Yeah, you helped me. I mean, let's be honest, bro. You helped write the book. I mean, there was like a section in there that you wrote you know, about, um, uh, what was it? Proviron, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was amazing. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, thank you. Thank you for your help and stuff too. So, I mean, really the book was crowdsourced. If you think about it before people knew what the word crowdsourced was by the smart people in the world, such as yourself, others, um, you know, to make it the way it was, but you know, here we are now essentially five years later, um, and there's been a lot of new findings, a lot of new stuff. So, you know, there's actually, you know, I can kind of just say this on the show cause this is new, um, I've had a couple of doctors, you know who they are in our network, you know, reach out to me in the last four months before my course launched. And they were like, look, we need to rewrite the book. But what we need to do is we need to make it way shorter, way more condensed. And, you know, this is how you optimize a man. And this is how you optimize a woman based on the evidence, right? Like no more bullshit, no more like, well, you could do this or you maybe could do that. But just a hardcore consensus of this is where the evidence has taken us, you know, after 25 to 30 years now of really doing this and understanding how to do it right. And so to lay it out. So I think I won't confirm, but I think that's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, as all people, you know, Michael, who write books today, uh, they go into a room, they create a temporary makeshift outline and then they record and then you transcribe. And then you either hire a ghostwriter or, you know, I have ghostwriters myself, but I like, you know, we just edit the, the book, but the one thing that I've learned about writing books is that you do not, in today's day and age, 2022, you do not write long books because people can't fucking read. Oh, I'm sorry, I swore. But they just can't read, right? Like, they're so distracted. There's no attention span. So you got to make a book, 150 pages. It's got to have links to videos. You know, it's got to have pictures of patients who have made tremendous transformations. Uh, and then it's got to be, again, like, tell me how to do it. Who do I pay to do it and how do I get it done? It's not, again, that book is amazing, right? But like when you read it, it's like so overwhelming. There's so much information in there that it's not even useful. What, um, when you first started the TRT, I know that's going back now quite a long time. What what were you prescribed? What what was the, the regime, the, the treatment plan, if you remember? Yeah, no, of course. It was Cipinate, um and HCG. So, because again, I was a young guy and he knew that I wanted to remain fertile. So he prescribed me Sipinate. I think it was 125 milligrams a week. It was two shots. It was two shots. I mean, even then he knew what, you know, you know, he, he, he was just very knowledgeable. Um, but anyway, it was two shots of Sipinate and HCG. And, you know, after that, <clears throat> he was, uh, he actually moved his clinic from LA down into South Orange County. And so I only worked with him for like two years. And then he recommended another local doctor in my, in the San Gabriel Valley. And then, you know, I mean, I've probably used 10 different doctors since 2000, uh, you know, working with them and stuff now. And obviously I've changed my delivery system from injections, but I mean, I've done it all, you know, I mean, I, I remember I think in the third year I was doing, uh, right after I left Dr. Scruggs, the next guy that he connected me with me was like, ah, oh, you don't need to inject yourself, you know, just start using the cream. And, you know, back then the cream wasn't the cream as like we know now it was like a much lower dose. And, and so I tried to use it like here and, you know, here the inner arms and the inner thighs. And it was absolutely horrible. Cream or was it more like the PLO cream or? 
I think it was the whitish cream, if I remember correctly. I mean, this is literally back in like 2002, 2003. I mean, I remember using it and dude, it was, you know, again, because of the ineffective absorption, I would have spikes where I was like a raving maniac. Like I, I remember like, I, I just, I, I would like, I would have like bouts of like, I was just get, I would get angry. You know what I mean? And I didn't understand why I was getting angry because when I was on the injections, I never had any issues whatsoever, right? So then I, I didn't realize until I started thinking about it, well, it's this, it's just poor absorption. And again, I don't even remember what the cream was. I know it wasn't 200 milligrams per milliliter. I mean, it was a lot smaller. So I was probably using more than I should have, you know, because I couldn't get it to come in. So I uh, probably over, you know, like everything, right? More is better. Um, but I only did that for like six months, dude. It was horrible. So I went back to injections. And then I did injections till 2018, you know, until Yep. I, I rarely, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I, I, I once I read my, own, my books and I, you know, got with other doctors and, you know, started to understanding to about mimicking, you know, the body's natural release of testosterone, I moved to every other day. So, and, and I also used, uh, I used, I always used either sipinate or propionate. And I wasn't able to get a script for propionate until about 2009, you know. Um, so I used propionate all the way up until about 2015. You know, now in the beginning too, you know, again, a lot has changed. Uh, you know, the theory was, which is still in the first book, that, you know, propionate was better because it was shorter, shorter half-life. And so, you know, the more, the shorter the half-life, the more it would mimic the body's natural. But, you know, as we started really getting into understanding testosterone, that at the end of the day, when testosterone cleaves molecularly and it's in the bloodstream, it's still testosterone. It doesn't matter what the ester is, right? So, like, we started to realize that there wasn't that, you know, myth of like, oh, it's better to use short-acting esters versus long-acting esters. Because at the end of the day, it was more about, like, how am I going to, you know, mimic the natural nadir of testosterone so regardless of the delivery i mean the uh the ester it didn't matter but i i remember initially i was using propionate but since 2015 uh i used sip and then i started to use the cream in 2018 around cream and this is a good thing to talk about on this podcast uh so dr keith nichols was the guy that got me on the cream and you know i got to give him a lot of credit because he's really one of the docs that I would say pioneered the awareness. And then obviously I blew it up and told people about it, but uh, you know, he was the guy that found the study or started talking about it. Um, you know, that showed that cream on the scrotum was eight times more absorbable or emollient than any other skin location. Right. So like that study, you know, really led to him like really working with that. And, you know, it took him a year to convince me to do it, but Something that I've learned from him in the last four months, and actually, dude, it, I'll break this to you. Uh, this just happened with me. And again, you know, typical big pharma, and it's not big pharma, it's just pharma, modern, modern, modern pharma. Uh, some of the people out there manufacturing the creams, dude, they're not good, man. The, t the creams are low dosed, underdosed, ineffective. So check this out. So I won't name the pharmacy, but I will say, you know, it's my doctor and my doctor is an amazing guy. His name is uh, Dr. Brandon Chastant. He's in Flagstaff, uh, Arizona at Grand Canyon Clinics. Amazing doctor. He's been on my podcast a couple of times, um, but I stopped taking my cream two weeks ago. To, uh, well, really two weeks in like four days now. And I used some of my own, you know, just gray market sipionate that I always have because I always have. You never know when you're going to need it, right? You got to go underground when the zombie apocalypse happens. And I just started injecting, you know, in my upper outer gluteal th uh, fat pad, 50 milligrams twice a week. So I'm not even, I, I'm like, compared to everyday cream, I'm low dose, right? Dude, uh, the effect from that compared to the cream, I was like, oh my God. I mean, I started feeling better, uh, instantly more energy, uh, test goggles. I mean, everything from like, what the hell? Like, so I immediately went to him on Monday of this week. Cause I was traveling. I just came back from Fort Lauderdale on late Sunday night. And I said, Brandon, you need to get into that pharmacy and check that place. You need to actually take the next one you get and analyze it because you're getting scammed. Now I tell him that. And he's like, you know, dude, I didn't want to have to say this because I was hopeful that it was only one batch, but I've been having some of my patients tell me the same thing. So Keith had told me four months ago, he's like, you know, in a private conversation, he's like, look, man, 
A lot of these pharmacies in the last year since COVID and all the bullshit that's happening right now, they're getting away with like underdosing their creams. They're not, they're not testing their, uh, their batches to find out, you know, if it's hitting 98.9 or 99.8 or whatever it is, efficacy. He goes, do not trust anybody unless you test it. And so I was like, ah, you're just freaking out. You know, you're being anal retentive. It happened with me. So then when Brandon told me the, a couple of other patients, I was like, wow. So I reached out to one of my buddies who also is a patient of his, who's also on the cream. He goes, bro, I'm so glad you told me this. He's like, I just had my labs done and I came out at 88 and I've been on the cream for six months. 88. That in, for the people in the UK, that would be, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's well below four, 400 is, you know, five, 600 is considered normal. You're like, I don't know. It's just bad. It's very low. That's awful. And that was, by the way, that was only eight hours of discontinuance of the cream. Now, obviously we know the cream because again, it mimics so quickly, right? But no, it wouldn't be that bad. So when I tested, I took my last test in July and I did not, because I always want to see a lower number in the nadir. I did not take my cream. My test was on a Wednesday. I did not take my cream on Tuesday or Wednesday morning and I got fasted Wednesday morning, right? So I was like 34 hours without application. And mine was 332. And so I was just like in my mind, ah, you know, I'm somewhere between 800 and 900 probably. So it's cool. And I didn't, but I didn't think about it, but I'm telling you, dude, like, I don't know when it started, but I am like, I feel so much better. By the way, I've had, I didn't tell you this, but I've had, you know, whatever this bioweapon bullshit is. I flew back to the East coast like three times in the last four weeks. And so I just, in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I've been traveling. I'm under the weather. I got some sort of viral illness, the big C, whatever. I won't, you know, exactly. 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 I'm not going to test myself. Don't give a fuck. But the truth is, is I think that my test has been low. That can happen. Now, I mean, it's hard to know with a compounding pharmacy. Um, one of the pharmacies that we, uh, we use is, is, is different in the UK, how it's regulated. We have specials, um, they call specials and they got special equivalent of FDA approval on, on the cream. So um, but still, I mean, mistakes even happen in big pharma. Sometimes things. Absolutely. I mean, dude, look, I'm getting it tested. <coughs> I've already sent my, cause I have my third tube, you know, cause I get it 90 day supply. We've so, got this, this is our dude, that's, cream. That's so, so that's exactly the one I have. Uh, so right. I guess the story that you, you tell is really about, you know, being aware of your symptoms, being aware of the treatments working, and also frequent testing, because if you just didn't test for a year, you may have gone with these really low levels. Bro, and that's the saddest part. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, so what I really want to say is, this is a big pharmacy, okay? A very well-known pharmacy. So it's like, you know, how many people is this happening to? Because in just talking to Brandon and him telling me two guys and then calling my buddy and like me too, I'm like, holy, right? Like this can't be a coincidence now. But again, Keith told me four months ago, he told me, I'm telling you, it's happening. I've had a hundred patients that came over who were using another cream and I tested them and they were all hypogonadal. He's like, I'm telling you, Jay, be careful. So I'm just like, right. But anyway, the point is, is yes, somebody like me, I've been optimized for so long. I was just getting one test a year. I was like, eh, you know, it can't be that big of a deal. Yes, I switched doctors, uh, but I didn't switch compounders right and so that's why there was no red flag because i've never had a problem right but now so anyway the moral of the story is test at least twice a year regardless of who your doctor is to see where you're at because yeah dude i mean like what the hell yeah thanks for being on this video with us jay and um again if anyone has any questions or comments please leave the comments and uh again feel free to subscribe hope you enjoy the video and we'll have another one soon